Science you can try at home. Today guys, we're going to have a go at making our very own helicopters. Now you might have seen these sort of things at the $2 shop before. Uh, a little bit nicer looking than this one, but if you can't get to the $2 shop, I reckon we can make our own that'll fly. I'll show you how in a second. First, you'll need a few things. This is the uh, plastic lid off an old ice cream container, two litre ice cream container. A fairly stout straw that I found hiding in the back of the cupboard. A good pair of scissors. And this is just a block of any old wood, and you'll see what that's for later, but basically it's to protect the table we're working on. And some sellotape. The first thing we're going to do is make our wing, or two wings in this case. Now the reason a ice cream container lid is pretty much the perfect thing is because as you can see on here, it's already got the shape that you want printed on the back. Some of them do anyway. Uh, the blue ones and the black ones tend to have this one on them. And it's also got the center already marked out, which is a really, really handy. So our first job is to very carefully cut out basically what we can see there. We don't need these other ones. Later on, if you wanted to experiment, you could do a four-winged one. Uh, but for the moment, we'll just stick with two because we know it works. Um, and of course, safety tips, when you're cutting with the scissors, be very, very careful. For example, these edges here, they're going to be a little bit tough. So just be super careful as you cut through for a start. Follow those lines. Here's your first cut done. So, as you can see, I've cut my two uh, wings. The next thing is to make a bit of a hole so that we can put our um, straw through. Be very careful with this next bit. This is where the block of wood comes in. I'll show you what to do. Now you'll see that the block of wood is going to protect my table because what I'm going to do is use the pointy part of the scissors. Usually scissors have a, a sort of more rounded bit and a pointy bit as well. We're going to use the pointy bit to help us make a hole. Now, the temptation is to drill it through like that with your fingers on the other side. Now we want to avoid that because as we know it could slip and cause um, some nasty cuts. So what we're going to do instead is put the pointy bit of the scissors down onto that center there. Careful as we can, just trying to get it exactly in the center if we can. And instead of spinning the scissors around, we'll spin the blade around on the bit of wood. You can see pretty quickly It drills a bit of a hole in there. You don't need any special tools. It's already started a nice little hole there. It could take a wee while because that, that knob in the middle there is a little bit thicker plastic. So we'll keep going. Now once it's definitely through, we can go back to our old method, just making a bit of a extra hole there. Hopefully you can see all right guys, it's quite dark. We don't want to get too carried away and make a hole big though, because ultimately our straw is going to go in there and we want it to hold on really, really tight. So just keep an eye on how big your hole is getting. For example, I don't want it to be any bigger than that, otherwise it will keep falling off. So I've worked away at this hole a little bit, and now it's going to fit in there, nice and tight. Now, in this case, I think I might have gone just a little bit too far, and I've made the hole. It fits really nicely, but it's a wee bit too loose. So if you do that, that's no problem. What you can do with the end of the straw, it doesn't have to be a paper one like this one, but... Um, just wrap a little bit of tape around the end and it'll make that fitting nice and tight again. So a bit of tape around the end. 
think I want my uh, black part of it to be up so I can put this colorful, colorful bit underneath. So this, oh, that's great. That's nice and tight there. Shouldn't come off in flight. So what we've got is the basics of it now. But what you'll notice is that the wings are pretty flat. They don't um, create any lift. And that's what we want with our helicopter. We want it to actually fly when we spin it. So we're going to take this and spin it like that. At the moment, it won't go anywhere because these aren't doing anything. So what we're going to do is angle them on opposite sides. Now you can do this just with your hands. You can just twist it. Like that, hold it for a minute. And the plastic will pretty much stay where it's put. Now you can see we've got lovely angled wings now. Doesn't even take that much. Um, you could get fancy and use a bit of heat or whatever, but you don't really need to. Um, so I'll just give it another little twist like that, make sure it stays where it's put. Nice, neat, even wings. Now, the other thing that you may need to do is put a little bit of tape on the bottom. What that does is it gives it just a little bit more weight uh, so that the tail of it doesn't start spinning around like that. So we'll do the same thing here. Just put a bit of put more weight on its on its tail. Like that, just sellotape. Doesn't have to be sellotape, any old tape will do. And now we're ready for a test flight. Success! So, what's the science in all of this? We've got our um, helicopter that we've made here, and uh, how does it fly is really the question we want to know. Well, as we talked about before, we've angled these wings uh, in a specific way. We understand that if we don't angle them, the thing doesn't fly. So what's happening there? Well, as it's rotating, it's slicing through the air and basically pushing some of the air down below it. So it's kind of corkscrewing through the air, uh, slicing through, a bit like the propeller works in a boat actually, and creating um, a, a, an area of higher pressure beneath the wings. So as it spins, it pushes that air below. And you can even feel it, when I spin it like that, I can feel a light breeze on my fingers. So. Um, where's the energy coming from? Well, obviously, when, when I spin it like this with my two, two hands, it's transferring the energy from my hands into these blades. Now, the, the pole, the straw, is just the uh, vehicle by which the uh, energy gets from my fingers into the wings. The wings do all of the work. Um, the straw transfers the energy from my hands, but also stabilizes it. If it was just wings, they would kind of roll and flap and not really work properly. So as this spins, it's creating a downdraft. The wind is being pushed down, the air is being pushed down that, that way. Now, it doesn't fly forever because the amount of energy that I can put into there isn't continuous. It only lasts for as long as the blades, the, the wings on the top, keep spinning. As soon as they stop, the energy is spent and gravity will take over and it will fall back down to the ground. What happens if I spin it the other way? So, well, this is what, how you get a fan. If I was to spin it the other way, I could make a nice cool breeze for myself. And in fact, it is actually possible to fly these upside down. It's an experiment you can try. You can fly it that way, but what happens if I try flying it that way? You might you might knock your fingers a little bit, but experiment with it. Try. The other thing you could try is to see if more blades work better. Um, as you could see on our uh, ice cream container before, there were uh, four blades drawn out on it. You could try four, see if it works better. Does it become too heavy? Good question. There's a science experiment for you to try. Have a go guys, have some fun.